Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me today. So today I've got a real-time tutorial for you of a red panda that I finished in May with color pencil and pastel pencils combined on pastel mat. So I filmed the full 10 hour project for Patreon. So for all of you um, supporters on Patreon, it is on there for the $7 membership. So have a look in the description if you're interested in joining as well. And today I'll be showing you some fragments of the final part of this project. So I'm showing you how to combine color pencil and pastel pencils to basically get the best of both worlds in your drawing. And I really like um, this technique. I really like combining polychromos, that's the color pencils, and the Bilo Carbothello uh, pastel pencils. So I hope you like this real-time process. All right, so let's continue outlining these leaves. So then we can fill in these. So first we have to outline the little twigs doing that again with my 770 and make sure it's very sharp And I'd rather keep my little twigs a little bit too wide. Rather keep them too wide than make them really extremely small right from the start. Because you can always make them thinner if you want them thinner. But making them wider again is a lot more difficult. Here we have a large one and then we have some little like grass and twigs here in the corner but I'm leaving those out because I think those are distracting so I'm just I am drawing in this big one because that's quite important. Okay. 
Okay. And this fur is still black right here on the shoulder. And then it goes like up until right there. So this is where the arm is. And then here it transitioned into the red fur. So actually I don't have to outline this part with the dark color because that's going to look weird. I'll have to outline it with more reddish tone. can do this little one. I really have to look closely because I lost the outlines a little bit. So I have to do them freehand. So that's why it's taking me so long. I have to concentrate. And then let's do the rest of the outlining with Let's just do brown, quite a neutral color. Right, so lightly outlining that and then we have another leaf there. Okay, so then I can fill in all the dark parts in between the leaves and the twigs back in with 770. Let's look at the fur direction here. Actually, it goes that way. So let's fill it in th this way. So this is all black. And I'm just putting down a light base layer. And then here's where the transition into the red fur will be. Okay, so let's take that up until here and then do um, the area slightly below the twigs here. So not all the way down yet, just up until right here. 
finish that. And then I'll do these leaves just to make sure that I don't smudge anything right here. I want to leave this open for now. Okay, up until there. And then for this little part, I'm going to do a light base layer of brown, the 635, just a little bit. Tiny bit of 640 on top of that. And this I also add on top of the blue tone. And then we're going to make sure that the color of the red fur fits very well with this fur. A little bit of that on top of the blue tone. Just to make it a bit more brownish looking. Actually, this edge is quite blue, so let's just keep that blue or paint grades actually Okay, just lightly do a bit of blending carefully around the leaves. Then I'm going to do black on top of that to darken it up. And that's the black pastel, so not the colored pencil.
hear some serious thunder outside. Don't know if you can hear it. Pretty cozy, actually. I'm just working on filling this all up with black. Trying to not push because I don't want to lose the colors underneath. Going all around these twigs and maybe blend this in a tiny little bit. Though I want to do as little blending as possible. But now I do have a nice area filled up. So now, can, now I can start with filling up all these twigs and leaves. So let's do that. All right, so let's get started with these leaves. I probably need to get some more green tones in as well. I'm going to be adding cobalt green 158 and chrome oxide green to 78 with my mix of greens. You can see that these uh, leaves and this one are a little bit in shadow, so those need to be darker than this one. Actually, I want maybe the base of this one a little bit darker. Let's add some cobalt green on that really nice bluish green. All right, so let's get going. I'm going to outline the edge of this bottom one. There's a tiny speck of black in between. Even more detailed. Okay, so I'm going to fill in the base with this one with the cobalt green, just lightly following the veiny lines in the leaf. This one actually overlaps that one, which creates a shadow. So let's just start blocking in all the dark shadows that I see. And then this one overlaps this one. I'm going to add chrome oxide green to this edge, which is really dark, so I'm going to add that on top. A little bit in here. Okay, so then to fill up a base layer, I am going to get a permanent green. So that is to 66. And I can just go over this 
go over my previous greens and do a base layer on these leaves. Taking it slowly. Okay, and then the tips of these pencils are of these leaves are a little lighter, so I'm going to switch to grass green now. So that's 171 and fill in the tips. Let's tighten the outline, still with grass green. And now to prevent that this gets too bright green, I am going to add some yellow in. Let's do some light yellow ochre, 183, and I'm going to just glaze this on top. And also in the tip. So that's a bit of earth green yellowish that I'm adding. Now I feel that I have to darken up the shadow. So I'm adding a bit more chrome oxide green now. So I'm looking at the shape of that shadow. You can see this diagonal line right here. So I'm going to recreate that.
Okay, so now I'm just going to add a few more layers with permanent green just to get rid of the paper texture a little bit more. Okay, so we are getting there. So now we just have uh, this little leaf in the corner to finish and this big one. And also this piece of fur. Let's do this piece of fur first. Oh, and there's a little twig that we also have to finish. So this twig end, it looks kind of pink. Let's do a cinnamon for that as a base tone. Oh, and we have some smaller ones as well. So that's 189. These ones look more green, so I'm going to go back to earth green yellowish for this one and that one. Okay, and then I'm going to use the walnut brown as a shadow color. And then highlighting with ivory. All right, so let's do this fur. So I need to take the 770 down even more. So I'm going all around this leaf now. Looking at the shape of the arm, so it goes back a little, ignoring all the leaves and twigs that are in front of this, that are out of focus, we're not drawing those in. And 640 for the rest of the fur.
All right, so I just want a smooth transi transition between these two colors for now. Then later I'm going to draw in some of the details. And I do need to get a more reddish pastel tone to mix that in with the fur. So let's go for 655. Mix that in. And then the details I'll do with colored pencil, but I want the base, the color of the fur to be right in the base. So this needs to be lots darker. So let's get some black and darken this all up. Going to keep working in the fur direction. So that's the black pastel by the way, because I want a nice deep black and the polychromos is just going to give a, a glare that I don't want. And I might even get the creative color black. That's even more black. Tiny bit of brown in the red fur for some more depth and filling up the, the paper. Okay, so filling up the layers, I'm going back to 770 because I don't want to put in more black, but I do want to fill up the paper a bit more. Okay, so now everything is covered up, so I can do a tiny bit of blending, following the fur direction.
All right. Okay, so I am going to get the Creative Color. So this is Creative Color Black Chalk number two. Creative Color Black. A really nice pastel pencil, which is super extremely black. And I'm just going to use it in the corner right here. Okay, so that's really nice. I can do some really nice dark fur texture in here. I'm going to try to not add too much of this, but just want to create some more shadow in between the hairs. And blend it in carefully, just by tapping a little bit. Then let's do the detail on here later on. So let's finish this first. Back to the 770. So this is just one large area of black. I do want to do a little more detail in it than I see in the reference photo, following the rounded shape of the arm a little bit as well. Okay, so I'm going to layer some 640 on top of this, create some more depth in the color, just quickly.
And then I'm going to layer black on top of this. Just a light layer of black, not too much. Right, so a little bit for 770 just to fill up the paper a bit more so we can blend this all out nicely. A little bit of extra for um, 640. We're almost there, just the final areas to finish and blending it out. Okay, and then I can do some fur texture with the creative color black. So now I have to look at where is that arm going. So here we have the darkest part, the chest, the area in between the arms. So I feel like the fur is going like downwards a little. So I'm creating random strokes with spaces in between and that's my fur. Fur is rather long as well.
I hope you can see that on camera. This one is really recommend to try getting if you don't have this one, the Creedy Color Black Pastel Pencil. You can do the same just with the Black Stabilo one. This one just gives a little bit more depth. And just tap that in. Make this soft so I don't see any harsh lines because I want the main focus to be on the head. So I don't want any harshness here, just soft fur. Alright, so let's do this leaf now. And this leaf is actually a little bit different when it comes to coloring than these ones because you can see a glare here on the leaf and that glare looks bluish. So I'm going to mix in sky blue with my layers, but I am going to start off with green base layer first. I'm going for, let's do the uh, Permanent green again, the 266. Start on this base here. Okay, and then let's highlight the fur on the arm. And I think I'm going to do that with violet. Let's see if this is light enough. Don't think so. Just add some violet streaks, just to add some more color in the fur. Really like the look of, vibrant, uh, of violet in dark fur. You can even add some little hairs with it here. In between the dark strokes. It's not very obvious, but it doesn't have to be. Okay, and then I'm going to do sky blue for the real lightest hairs on the edge of the shoulder. Trying to be random with it. First, quite long, so I can make my strong uh, strokes quite long as well. It's really getting late. I'm trying to finish this all in one evening, so it's getting late. I almost can't talk anymore. Right, so I'm not pushing much because I don't want these to be the brightest hairs yet. Let's do some on here as well. Just some flimsy flyaway hairs.
And then with ivory to contrast the cool of the blue, I'm going to highlight some hairs even more. And I can do this with super light pressure because I've built up the layers so lightly with very light pressure as well. So with no effort at all, I can just draw these in. I do have to make sure that this corner here is dark enough. Let's add some more black. basically it. Now we still have to do the whiskers, which are very important. So let's do the whiskers on the left side of the face first. Here we've put down pastel. And this is all pastel, so actually these whiskers and those from the chin can all be with pastels. And then they will be extra opaque. And then these ones I think I'll have to do with color pencil. And actually these ones right here, these long ones, look more yellowish as well. So I think I'll have to put those in with ivory, uh, with the polychromos. So let's do that first. Ivory is a 103 by the way. carefully place down my little piece of paper and in quick determined strokes I'm going to put in these whiskers start with the longest one so I have my pencil very sharp and I'm going to guide it across the paper Going to switch to white now, the white polychromos. Do some below that. You can see, when you look at these whiskers closely, you can see that they are cut off and that the ends of them are actually pretty wide, so they aren't like coming down to a small tip. Yeah, this one is, 
but these ones aren't. So I'm going to go over with my pencil and just thicken the ends slightly. All right, so these ones right here, which are overlapping the black fur, I can do with a white pastel. So I'm going to do that with the white pit pastel. You can also do it with the white uh, stabilo one. My white stabilo one broke, so I need to do to use the white pit. These will probably be a little thicker. Okay, so that's going pretty well. And now we need to do the whiskers on the other side of the face. So this is going to be a little harder because there is just a lot of already light areas there. So maybe I need to darken up slightly to make sure that the whiskers stand out better. I'm going to do some glazing with dark indigo but not too much. And then I'll just have to try to make these whiskers here stand out. I'm getting my white.
Okay, so these ones are definitely a lot harder. Also, I feel like I didn't really put in these dots on the muscles on the muzzle well, so I think I need to just put some more time in these dots. And I also see some black um, whiskers, so let's put those in as well. Actually, they don't look really black, they look more of a dark gray, so I'm going to do them with Payne's Gray. Really sharp. So I see a little whisker right here. Take some guts to just go over your drawing like this. black on some of these All right, so let's zoom out. Let's see what this looks like. So this is the stage in which we can do make adjustments, add more color glazes if I want to. Also, I'm definitely going to put in fireflies, so let's do that as well. I want yellow fireflies, so I'm starting with 205. As always, I'm just placing down dots. Or circles. Vary a bit in the size. Smooth out the edge of the dots by going over them a little bit with your finger.
And then with the white pastel, I'll place a tiny dot in the center. And this is optional. I just like to do fireflies. Maybe then I feel, as I now put more yellow in the background, um, I want some of that yellow reflecting onto the panda. So, I'm picking my dark Naples ochre, and I'm going to do a tiny bit of glazing on the edge of the face. It's on the ear. Oh, and I also needed to darken up this stripe, so I'm going to get a little, let's do some Caput Mortem. I can now darken up in between the whiskers. Alright, so that's it for today. I hope you like how this one turned out. I really love drawing this one. It's probably my favorite so far this year, so really lovely drawing to make. If you want to recreate it and learn exactly how I did the whole piece, have a look on Patreon for the $7 membership. You also get access to all the other tutorials on there. There's also a library um, on my website, so there's a link to that as well in the description where you can see all the tutorials that I have currently available. And thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to give this video a like and then I'll see you in the next video.